I'm very pleased to make another contribution to this audiovisual library on international law prepared under the auspices of the Codification Division of the Office of Legal Affairs in, in, in the United Nations Secretariat. My topic today will be the advisory jurisdiction of the International Court of Justice. <clears throat> that topic has a particular connection to my very early working life in the Codification Division. Uh, in, back in 1970, uh, I was preparing for publication a thesis which I'd written a few years before in New Zealand on the advisory jurisdiction of the court. Now I should stress that I undertook this re revision work in, in the uh, evenings and in the weekends, not in the working time of the division. Now to go back to the beginning, the Covenant of the League of Nations of 1919 provided for the establishment of a permanent court of international justice. And Article 14 of the Covenant said very cryptically that the court um, may also give advisory opinions. That's what it said in English. In French it said donora, which suggested an obligation. When, when the, the texts were rewritten um, as part of the statute of the uh, International Court back in 1945, it was made clear in the French text as well that the court's power was discretionary. The court may, the court uh, per uh, donne um, uh, an advisory opinion. Now, when this power of the court um, to give an opinion at the request originally of the Assembly of the League of Nations or the Council was conferred, people, especially the American uh, member of the advisory committee which prepared the statute, Ayla Hu Root, a uh, great international lawyer, Secretary of State and so on, uh, and the initial American member of the International Court, John Bassett Moore, said, this function was obviously not a judicial function. They, s they, they no doubt had in mind the history of the United States Supreme Court, which had decided very early on that it would not give opinions at the request <coughs> of the President. Uh, President Washington was rebuffed by Chief Justice Marshall when uh, the court was asked to give advice on a number of matters relating to the law of neutrality during the wars in Europe uh, at that time in the early 19th century. The, um, uh, that, that refusal is not uncommon. The High Court of Australia, for instance, decided that it was not its job to give advice to the executive. Its job was to decide cases. And if you look at the statute of the court, you find that emphasis on deciding disputes, deciding them, not merely giving advice in the words added to the statute of the court in 1945, words that were given have, have been given some prominence in the Marshall Islands cases uh, decided by the International Court in uh, 2016. Now why is there this objection? Well, the initial one is that courts decide, they don't advise. If you want advice, uh, if you're a government agency, you go to the law offices, you go to the attorneys.